Thank you. How are you doing? Um, so we're going to talk about the art of HDR. And what I want to do with this thing is instead of talking about specifics of how you do, you know, set a value in there and get inside of the application, I just want to put it out there that you guys can understand what HDR is and things that you have to think when you are actually doing it instead of like showing you numbers and values and things like that. But the question is that before we get into this thing, I need to show you or tell you about specific things for you to understand or to set the base for understanding what we're going to talk about. So in this case, when um, SDR started, we just came from what SDR was before in color space. That uh, w what you can see in this graphic is basically what your eye can see. So this is uh, the total spectrum of what your eye can see. And in this triangle that you're seeing here is just what Rec 709, that it was what it was up to now, the standard for broadcast. Then we expanded that to what it was P3. So they added more colors and more saturation and uh, for those colors. So we had more values basically for that color space. And then we went to what we have right now that is Rec 2020. So that's the bigger uh, triangle that we see right here. But this is just the amount of colors that we see. Just think about it as if we were, when it was black and white, you were painting only with two crayons. You had the black and the white. Right? And then we came out with Rec 709, or even before that, and we gave you like 20 crayons. And then we gave you 100, and now we're giving you 1,000. So before, it was pretty easy to color somebody and to say, like, this should be looking like this, and that's the image that we have. But right now, for, let's say, skin tone, you would grab an orange because you only had one. But now you had 20 oranges to choose, you know? And then you can fine-tune that way more. But that's just the amount. What happens with the volume of those colors? With SDR, we had from 0 to 100 nits right now. And then we changed to HDR to be 10,000 nits. That's where the spectrum is of the volume of the colors. So the amount of colors that we saw right before, they can be as bright as 10,000 nits, keeping the saturation. And then in here, uh, HDR is trying to get rid of the problem that before we're shooting with all this color spectrum in here, with all this contrast, that this is what your eye can see. The camera is capturing that. But then we're reducing all the way down to when we see it in the screen. And then HDR is trying to solve that by trying to keep as maximum of that information all the way till the end of the pipeline. So the big question is like, how do I color HDR? How do, how do I think about what can I do with the image if I haven't seen it before? Like before, you would, with SDR, you can go and you can pop any movie. You can grab a Blu-ray. You can go to Netflix. You can watch something. And you can see it right away, right? But uh, with HDR, you don't, you don't have that many references. Now we start to have. But a year ago, when I started doing this thing, or a year and a half ago, there wasn't any references. There was like maybe 20 movies. And uh, there was a big question like, how do, I, how do I color this? Do I have to make it brighter? Do I have to make it darker? Or do I have to expand the image to fill the gap all the way from black to white? Or what's, what's the deal with this thing, right? But it, it, was, it was a question. It was like all the time in my head, like, OK, I'm going to go bright. And then I would go and make it dark. And then the next day, I would come back. And then I would change it to the opposite that I did before. Uh, but then I realized that you've already seen HDR. Life is HDR. So when you are in real life, you're seeing right now in here, maybe I'm in a, under a light that is like maybe 7,000 nits, 8,000 nits. And you guys in there are like at 10 nits, maybe 50, 100. So these are examples of uh, how real images with real values look in real life. So you can see here in the, in the, first, in the biggest image in here, you can see that we can go up to 7,000 nits. And in the same image, you can go down here, where it looks like it would be the darkest part of the image is 300 nits. This is taken with a, with a photometer at the right spot of taking the picture. And then in the bottom one, you can see that the wall of the, that, the parking structure is hitting 17,000 nits. 
So how do you represent all this into that container of zero to 10,000 nets? How, how am I gonna map this thing and put it inside of that to try to reproduce or to, to have a nice balanced image, right? You have to keep in mind a bunch of things when you're doing that. And is that the human eye can see a total range of 24 stops. But what happens is that we can only see 12 at a time. So your eye is adapting. When you're, uh, like in, in my case, you're seeing the image the opposite way that I'm seeing right now. I have these lights in my face. I can barely see anything in here because my eye is adapting to this amount of light and then I don't see through the blacks. But maybe on your side, you can see more through the, you know, your surroundings that I can see because your, your eye is going up and down on those 12 stops and adapting to that. So that's important when you're uh, call correcting for HDR because you have to think that you can go all the way up and make the, the image really bright, and maybe you want to think that bringing the blacks all the way down to the bottom to be pure black is going to be a nice image. But what happens sometimes is that the glare of the, of the highlights is not going to allow you to see through those blacks. So maybe you better bring them up and see through the blacks if that's what you want. Keep in mind also that everything that everybody talks about right now is about 1,000 nits. But the spec is for 10,000 nits. So these values, everything that we're going to talk in here is going to change throughout the, you know, the next years when we're going to have you know, brighter screens and when we're going to keep bringing it up and up and up. This is a, a breakup of what the values should be. You know, and this is, you can see how many steps are out there, right? We can only see 24 and then 12 at a time. So how you map this thing to display it into the screen, right? It's easy right now because we only have 1,000 nits. So pretty much it's like around like the two, 12 to 13 stops that we can see at, at, a, at a time. But we're going to have brighter screens like, like a 2,000, 4,000, I don't know, 8,000 nits at some point. Sony already has one at 10,000 nits. There was a demo, at, I think it was CES. But uh, you're going to have to do that, what happens to your eye in, 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 in nature, right? So you have to think about what do you want to do with the image? Where do you want to bring it, right? And uh, what th that's one of the keys is that the human eye adapts faster to light than to darkness. So when you transition from a dark environment to light, that's faster when you go the opposite way around. So what happens if I have an image, let's say it's a scary movie, right? And you're outside and it's shiny and then you want to go inside and it's dark. Do you want people to see through? Do you want people to not see anything? You, so then they are scared or the opposite, seeing more is going to make you more scared. So you're going to think how that transition from going to, from bright to dark is going to happen. If it's going to be instant or you're going to have a couple shots that's going to bring it down little by little and then you get to the tone where you want to be like in the darkness. So that, that's one of the things that you have to think about. Coming with that is this, is like, what do, you, what do you want the viewer to feel? Do you want them that, you know, to feel scared, to see, to not see, to feel like blinded by the light? You know, if you go the opposite way around, would you go from a dark environment to a bright one? You want to shock them? In this case, for example, if you have an image like that, what do you want to do? You want to, you want to feel you're in the concert or you want to feel you're viewing a concert through a screen? So if you would be in the concert, you would go all the way up with, a, with, a, with the lights. And then you would barely see anything in the shadows versus if you would color this to see it, you would try to squeeze all that information inside so people can see through the blacks and people can see all the highlight power. Another thing that you have to think about is how your content is going to be seen. If the content is going to be seen in a Control environment like this one, just imagine that this is a movie theater. Maybe you want to see, you want to color your whole thing darker. And then, because you're going to be able to see through the blacks. Or if it's going to be seen outside, like it's a mobile device or something like that. So you want to, you want to do it the opposite. You want to bring it up a little bit. So you, you're going to see, I'm going to show you uh, some values and you're going to understand why I'm saying all this stuff. But this is the main thing, right? When you can control the environment, you're gonna see the blacks, you're gonna see all that stuff, so maybe you wanna dig deep into the shadows, or if you wanna 
you know, your content is going to be seen outside or uh, like it's in a mobile device or something like that, you want to be going higher, you know, so then people are going to be able to see better because you're going to see the blacks. Another thing is like, it, it, that it's in, interesting to know is that, um, for example, LCDs and OLEDs display the color, this, this difference in a different way. So OLEDs can be brighter. No, sorry. OLEDs are not as bright as LCDs, but they can display the blacks better. And then LCDs are brighter, but the blacks are not as deep. So you're doing this. So for example, if you want to buy a TV and you want to have it in an environment like this, you would like to buy maybe an OLED TV versus if you're going to have a TV that is going to be outside, like let's say in a, in a coffee shop and it's going to be out there, maybe you want to buy an LCD because it's going to be brighter. So when you color your content, you have to think these things also. So right now, the recommendations are these ones. And you're going to see that up until here, this is almost the same as we, what we have been doing now. When we are coloring stuff, we just keep the midtones in here, so that would be around five, five nits. Look how low is that compared to the whole scale up to 10,000 nits. And then the blacks, they tell us that you know, that black should be around you know, 0.2 nits. And then you have above midtones, that that's where Mid-tones is where skin tones should be. It should be between this and this. So we should be around like 15 nits, something like that. So if you look at the scale, you're actually leaving everything for the highlights. So you go here, broad highlights, that would be like a sky, like the clouds in a, in a sunny day, something like that. You're going to bring it up to 200 nits. And then specular highlights, that it would be reflections like a watch or something like that, reflecting the light to the camera that would go 500 and up. But then we're clipping it at 1,000 nits today. Uh, so this is what they recommend. But it's not strict. So if you're coloring or you're planning on color, you can take this as a, as a, as a reference, but it's not strict. You can, you can move it around. Blacks are not blacks all the time. Like SDR, it was so small that the difference between something being bright or not, it was so small that it was, we, we had to play with that, so you would always try to stretch the contrast all the way to top and bottom. But now we have all this range, and then we can make something dark without having to be pure black, because the, black, the brights are so high that that gives you the contrast. So that's, that's the interesting part of, of HDR, is that you're not locked to that small range. It's so big that you can move up and down. Remember what the eye does. But remember, this is just a recommendation. You can do whatever you want with the image. It doesn't have to be exactly what it said in there. Because at the end of the day, we're doing just art. And it could be any other one. You know, this is uh, Da Vinci that we, have, that we have Picasso in there. Which one is better? It's up to the eyes of the beholder.